shouldn't skipping to payday be as easy as skipping to the next song? Introducing MyPay from Chime. Get up to $500 of your pay before payday. Get paid when you say, with MyPay. Start at Chime.com. Eligibility requirements apply. Credit limits range from $20 to $500. Provided by the Bancorp Bank NA and Stride Bank NA. Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to... Uh, Mom? This is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. They'll ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, Mom. Christmaka, Joe. Merry Christmaka. Christmaha? <laughs> Christmaha? Yeah, no, it's Christmaha. You know, we're celebrating it September 15th. So not officially on the podcast, Christmaha, but certainly in the OC, it's Christmaha. Um, and I got to say, you know, it's the final Christmaka episode. It's the end of an era. And what a, what a fucking sad fart way <laughs> to end the four season journey of Christmaka. Not with, a sad fart. <laughs> which like not, listen, I still will take this episode over those first three Volchek must be murdered episodes. Sure. But after how much fun I've had with the last three episodes, this was a fucking bummer of an episode. <laughs> um, and I texted you, ironically, I texted you, uh, just a couple days earlier about watching One Tree Hill. Yeah. And I think I said like, oh, dear God, Nathan's like in a car crash coma. Fake alternate reality episode is such a waste of television. And you wrote just you wait. Yep. Which I don't know if that means that I had to deal with more of that on One Tree Hill or if you knew that this episode was coming down the pipeline. Oh, I knew that this episode was coming down the pipeline. <laughs> this is my least favorite episode of the OC period full stop I mean understandably because they do something that's really really annoying beyond like the alternate fantasy reality thing alone is really annoying but then I think the jumping to the real world and the doctors just being like yeah they're fine they just have to wake up like yeah <laughs> there's no stakes at all. The only stakes in this episode are the mistakes of making it in the first place. <laughs> like, Damn. <laughs> that was the line I practiced earlier today. It was like, Joe wow, will love that line. That was the, you know me too well. That was beautiful. Oh, you're man. welcome. Come on. I mean, I knew that we were going to be in trouble right out the gate before they even like fall into the comas. I was like, oh, no, because we have that letter from Marissa. And I'm like, man, we had three great episodes where the ghost of Marissa like wasn't looming in every corner anymore. And yeah. I knew that that letter was going to trigger something. Yeah. But like this was not what I expected. Like there's there is even like like I said, like anytime that you're in this alternate reality type show, the stakes are gone and there's no pressure to be found. But like. As I was saying to Barb when I was talking about the episode today, I was like, at the very least, add some type of stakes of like, oh, well, if they don't wake up in the next 24 hours, like it will. They die. It's, like <laughs> well, Or it's like it's less likely that they'll be coming out of the coma. Like add some level of pressure where you feel like they do have to, as Taylor suggested, complete some tasks to come out of the coma. Mm -hmm. Like give us something. Yeah. But it's just like, nope, they're fine. At any moment they can wake up and this will all be gone. Really? <laughs> like, that's like spoken like a true lover of both like YA romance and like Dungeons and Dragons. Like they need to complete the quest to they be do. released. <laughs> I mean, they kind of do in this episode. Like, well, I feel like this is going to be a really short episode because like, what's the point there's no, like nothing happens in this episode mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really like it's just like an excuse for this whole episode is 40 minutes of like ryan can now move on from marissa like yeah. that's all the episode is trying to convey so we get into like 
it's just like the because they can't get all the original cast back it makes it dumb like they have to jump through hoops to explain why che now chester is like marrying summer in this alternate reality and like at the end of the day we know it's because like fucking luke they couldn't get like luke to come back to be in this show like because that would make more sense right like marissa dies in tijuana and Luke, that brings Luke and Summer closer, and now they're getting married. You know, like there's there's yeah. a world where that makes way more sense than suddenly this character who's never set foot in the OC until the episode earlier mm-hmm. is now has been living in the OC long enough to date and marry Summer and like, I, have I, an affair I, with Julie Cooper. I hate that. I hate it where it's just like, okay, we we want to. It's like either we want to bring this person in because we like them, or we or we want to bring this person in because the fans like them. Um, the like the penultimate episode of Frasier did that. Uh, well, maybe yeah. where it was like, you know, they were doing these flashbacks over the course of the series, which has like been eleven years, and then one of the flashbacks, it like the pizza guy that shows up is actually Kenny, who is the station manager. And it's yeah. like, that's actually the first time they met. And I fucking hate when people do that. Cause it's like, they're not a part of it. They're not a part yeah. of it. Just let it, let it, you, you meaning the creatives did this, just let them go. <laughs> well, and, but that's the other thing, right? It's like either bring none of them bra- back or bring all of them back. But like not having, marissa here at all and just killing her a second time which seems so callous already a second time but also the first time right like yeah like she died the first time in tijuana and like and then like not bringing luke back because you already have chris pratt there but then bringing jimmy cooper back which like don't get me wrong i love a jimmy cooper and it's exciting to see jimmy cooper yeah but it's like why even bring him into this then just have her marry the bullet like like it's like it doesn't like it it should just you know what it is it's like bringing them back makes less sense than the second you bring Jimmy Cooper back it makes you wonder why did why didn't you bring them all back where at least if it was like the bullet and Che you could have somewhat of like a wizard of oz like and you were there and you were there sure type dream aspect to it but like it just like the whole logic just crumbles and it gets more and more bizarre and like as all of them are angry at Taylor and Ryan again, I'm like, who the fuck cares? This isn't real. He's dreaming. Like, yeah. like it's just like so hard to care or be invested in a 40 minute dream. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, first of all, like the thing with the ladder, like y'all as someone who always held the ladder for my dad, like you need to have someone to hold the ladder for you. Like yes. you can't be doing that shit. One, two, it would have made more sense for them like, I don't know what that character or that actor was doing at this time. I feel like it might have been maybe Grays or something. But, like, bringing Luke back as the, like, enga- like the person who Summer was engaged to would have been much better. This is one of those things that I also hate in film and TV where there is a truth that it, there's a, something that is true in the in the waking world um is it's a secret in the waking world is revealed in the dreaming world because like i think we're supposed to believe that che chester is actually who he is like he's just this big poser or he has all this money you know what i mean like that's where we are i mean it's hinted at a little bit in the end the episodes to this point and i'm just like i hate that because it's like let it exist I know that we're on the journey with you, but like as far like for me, you know, and I'm I'm assuming like you can appreciate this as continuity people, right? This is not information that we're supposed to know, but yeah. we do. Well, and that's like I feel like the reason why they keep showing us the stuff in the hospital is they want to build up these other storylines, right? They want to build up Julie Cooper forcing Taylor's mom to leave the airport to go visit her daughter in the hospital and like at the end of the day like we didn't need that scene right like taylor's awake and her mom's awful and she just says like i hope you can catch another flight have a you know merry christmas i love you mom or whatever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's like we didn't need that scene to happen because we already got yeah taylor standing up to her mom in the dream world and like we didn't need her to then like do the opposite and just like not give a shit at all about her mom in the real world like we already got like we already have we already know that she's moved on from that now, like mm-hmm. that this has done that for. Her. And I feel like the other thing is that they want to have 
Julie Cooper explain what the letter is from Marissa because they certainly weren't going to call like Misha Barton and have her read voiceover of the letter. So Could like you, you had to have yeah, like you had to have a character actively explain what was in the letter. But like. I don't know. Like, I feel like there's such a more poetic way that you could have done. I think Community does a beautiful job in their Christmas episode where Abed has read a letter from his mom. And that's like why he's having a psychotic break. Right. Like there's like and it's the way that that's presented in that episode, which is also a fantastical like claymation episode where everything is fantasy. Like there does feel like there's stakes, even though the characters in the episode keep telling you that there's no stakes. Because they keep reminding you that they're just sitting in the study room while all of this is happening. <laughs> like, yeah. so like, I just, I feel like community handled this entire concept better than the OC who's trying really hard to make this stick yeah. throughout the entire episode. But we do get two things that I will say positive about the episode. Sure, And I have one. So we'll see if we match. We get a return of Princess Sparkle and Captain Oates in dialogue, which yes, they've been gone for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, hey, they're here, too. Um, and I had to laugh at how quickly Seth just accepts everything when Ryan explains to him <laughs> that he's from an alternate universe. And he just says, I always knew that there was a possibility this could happen. And he goes, I figured that you would. <laughs> and they just go from there. Like, I... That was, like, the one moment where I had to smile and laugh because I'm like, yeah, like, I guess... If there was one person where you had to be like, I'm from an alternate timeline where all of these things happened, Seth Cohen would be the first person to absolutely, no questions asked, buy into that and be like, all yeah, right, right, let's go from here. <laughs> what was your, was that one of your two things? No, mine is a little more serious. So like, I, you know, drew a hard line. You know how much I love this show. <laughs> drew yeah. a hard line that like, no, I, this is my least favorite episode. The reason why it's my least favorite episode is because the you build up such goodwill in the first one and the second one and it be and by the second one it's already a phenomenon. The Christmaka bar mitzvaka, ugh, like you that know, already was starting to like lose steam yeah. on Christmaka because yeah. like you don't have to make it like they're they're trying too hard the, in Christmaka bar mitzvaka they were trying too hard to make. Uh, it a part of the larger episodic narrative yeah. right and as opposed to just you can just make it stand alone right like i i watch the festivus episode every year on festivus big and it's perfect as is in the thing i mean like that's also just kind of how uh, yeah but seinfeld if they had i mean that's in the final season of seinfeld but if they had gone for four more seasons and every year they did a different variation of the Festivus episode, it would lose all the steam of Festivus. Yeah, but I will tell you, I will tell you that the thing that I actually really like about this episode is the, like, is introducing the concept to Ryan, which will help him move forward in the season, is that, oh, yeah, Marissa was always destined to die. Yes. Right. Like that, like she died in T. All he did was extend her life to be allowed to graduate high school. Yeah. If he I, hadn't come into the picture, that probably wouldn't have ever happened. Extend her life and make it so ex not only extend her life, but just like you, you know, she you like gave her some nice moments. Right. Like it wasn't yeah. so much that she, it, not just extending her life, but like extending her life in a way that like you it also helps the other people. Like, you know, we don't get a but we don't get a Jimmy Cooper that, you know, we don't we don't get a Jimmy Cooper Kirsten. We don't get a. <laughs> but here's where yeah. that logic fumbles and essentially falls apart. If Ryan never came in the picture, would the Tijuana of trip have even happened or would the Tijuana of trip have happened the way that it did happen? Right. Because like Ryan entering the picture is what caused the most tension between her and Luke and seeing Luke cheating on her is what led her to start drinking and mixing the drugs and everything that led to her inevitable overdose. But like, if none of those things happened, then would they have even been in that? So like, that's like the other problem with when you do these like time travel, alternate reality type circumstances is that it does like create this weird, this weird world of like, would this have even fucking happened 
than that you're like it's like the butterfly effect concept of like do you realize how many other things get affected by that butterfly effect than just like one thing you know what i mean like so it's like you do have to get stuck on that logic of like maybe marissa would still be alive if ryan never showed up like it's hard it sucks to say like that but like maybe she would have been i can't believe i'm about to uh not defend but i think that it i, I hear what you're saying yeah. And I mean, this is also one of the reasons why, like, time travel, right, like, doesn't yeah. work in a lot of movies. We have to just suspend disbelief. But I feel like with this specifically is that the Harbor Kids were always going to go, right? The yeah. Harbor Kids were always going to go. Luke was always going to cheat on her. Or in this situation, if Ryan's not introduced, like, just the mere fact that the Harbor Kids were always going to go to Mexico introduces that concept of her overdosing. And it could be one reason or another, but again, it is fated the way that like, you know, it's very final destination. Like, (laughs) yes, no. Okay. It it is giving final destination. You're correct. Um, But yeah, I mean, end of the day, this is a bad, bad episode. This is like, Mm -hmm. this is definitely a low point. Again, I think that the first four, the first three episodes of season four, I like less than Mm -hmm. this. But this is still pretty bottom of the barrel overall for the OC across four seasons. This is a yeah. pointless episode. Introducing My Pay from Chime, a revolutionary new way to get paid. Let's say new dates to your favorite band sold out tour drop Tuesday, but you get paid Friday. Life doesn't wait for payday. With My Pay from Chime, you can get up to $500 of your pay before payday. No interest, no credit check, no mandatory fees. My Pay. Get paid when you say. Start at Chime.com. Eligibility requirements apply. Credit limits range from $20 to $500. $2 fee to get funds instantly. Provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. and Stride Bank N.A. What's new from Apple? There's the new iPhone 16 Pro, built for Apple intelligence. And it comes with the all-new camera control, giving you an easier way to quickly access your camera tools. The new Apple Watch Series 10 has our biggest display and our thinnest design ever. And this? It's the sound of active noise cancellation. Now available on one of two new AirPods 4 models. So quiet. Check out all of the new products and new features at Apple.com. You can even buy yourself something new. See Apple.com for product availability updates. Apple Intelligence coming this fall. We're making an ad. Napping yeah. ads. I hear that Gary Sinise is free. Oh, okay, great. He hasn't worked since 2020. <laughs> so um, what would be the script that we would have Gary Sinise say for the Napping Through Happy Hour podcast? Listen to this damn show. Damn it. The Napping Through Happy Hour podcast brought to you by Geekscape. Real life, real drama, real time. I'm Gary Sinise. That's the ad. ad. That's the ad. That's the ad. But it actually has a song that I really like in it. So let's talk about the music. Sure. Um, First off, I mean, having a different band cover California for the opening is a pretty good bit. Uh, We get a version of California performed by the band uh, Mates of State. Uh, for this alternate universe, slowed down, somber version of California. Um, when Ryan hears that Marissa died in Tijuana, we hear Sia covering Paranoid Android by Radiohead. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the final scene, basically, when Ryan goes to the lifeguard house to read the letter, uh, Aster commands into dust plays. Um, I have loved this Sia cover for years. Mm. So hearing it show up in this episode, I was like, oh, absolutely. It's got to be this Sia cover of Paranoid Android as my song pick. But I'm curious, do you go with the alternate version of California? Uh-huh. Do you yeah. go with Into Dust? Of course you did. I was. Uh, why, I also why like, I like the song, but like, and I love covers, but I don't know Radiohead that well. So yeah. like, you know, it's not, and I'm, you know, what I have heard of like, Radiohead songs that are not creep they're usually things that I don't listen to yeah Paranoid Android you might want to check out Paranoid Android is like I would compare this is such a strange comparison I would compare Paranoid Android to like Radiohead's Bohemian Rhapsody in the sense that it's like in the sense that it's like a seven minute song that changes genres a couple different times throughout but like is a cohesive story that'll go from like sad acoustic somber into like really heavy breakdown into like an almost operatic part in the middle and then like comes back to like 
the metal and then like ends back up. Like it kind of just so has, because of the levels is what you're saying. I, yeah, you know what? Bohemian Rhapsody is not accurate. I would say it was more like it's their version of like scenes from an Italian restaurant. <laughs> like it follows the mood of that where like think of scenes of Italian restaurant starts off slow and somber, picks up into <laughs> crazy. Fucking jump. Has, but <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, but Queen like think Billy about Joel. the. But like I love Billy Joel and I love that song and I love that song because it's it's literally three it's almost three songs smashed together right you have sure. like the end caps that are the like bottle of red bottle of white then you have the the chunk of the song that's like much faster and it's all about Brenda and Eddie but there is also this like beautiful orchestral part that brings you back out of the Brendan Eddie into the Italian restaurant again. Sure. That's like a solid minute of the song that like feels so triumphant and sweeping when it plays, where it's, it's the same melody line, but it's presented in such a different way. I was, I am a very like Luke warm uh, Radiohead fan to begin with, but I sure. think, I think paranoid Android just as a piece of music, I think you'd find interesting because it, it does just fit like four different, pieces of music smashed together and then having Sia cover it just feels like a brilliant decision because Sia is another musician that I see as just being like very layered in her music where she could have a crazy dance track or she could have like the most heartbreaking song you've ever heard in your life and sometimes it's both at the exact same time you know what I mean like Chandelier is an incredible dance track that is also one of the most heartbreakingly performed songs I've ever heard in my entire life sure 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 um you know what I'm gonna talk about two quick things in pop culture now that we're talking about all of this oh do I get two things then uh mine's just gonna be a quick reference to bounce off of Sia because uh did you hear the news about New Radicals the other day Wait, New Radicals, like the 90s band? Yep, the 90s band, New Radicals. Uh, so they reunited for the first time four years ago mm-hmm. for uh, Joe Biden's uh, inauguration. Sure. And they reunited again at the for the Demo- at the DNC. And to celebrate that, they released two recordings that were supposed to be on their second album before they broke up, which includes the original version of murder on the dance floor. Oh, <laughs> hold on now. So I'm just passing that information to you. That's not like a big pop culture murder thing, but I'm dance like, for a new radical song. It was written to be a new radical song. And when they broke up, he sold the song. Wow. Yeah. So have fun with that. Um, but the pop culture promo that I'm going to actually do is a podcast that I love, Search Engine, uh, put out an amazing episode that I recommend everyone check out. It's I think it's going to end up on like my top 10 favorite podcast episodes of the year list. Uh, so the concept of Search Engine is they answer a question that um, you may not know the answer to or it might be difficult to find the answer to. Sure. And they sit down with an expert who can answer that question. And the episode was called what is the best phone to commit crime with? And (laughs) it goes into this insane story that I think more people, I didn't know this story at all. Do you know about the FBI sting for like three years where they created a fake crime cell phone called anonymous that was sold exclusively to drug cartel for like three years. And they were just getting copies of every text message that was sent and we're like essentially able to arrest 800 criminals in a single day based on all of the evidence that they gathered over that time. Wow. Um, no, I didn't know and that. And they go through the entire story and it is fascinating. Like even knowing like, oh, this is part of the story, like listening to everything that was part of that is fascinating. It's an hour long episode. I highly recommend the what is the best phone for committing crime episode of search engine. It was like one of those episodes where like I left to go get Starbucks Mm -hmm. and the episode wasn't done on the drive home. So I just like kept doing loops around the neighborhood to get to the end because I'm like, I need to hear what happens next. I can't possibly pause this episode. Yeah. So uh, (laughs) highly recommend. Um, And how about you, Joe? Um, so I, I was like, after my friend's binge, which technically 
if I think about it, is the second French Friends binge that I've done this year. I heard you mention that on uh, Fright School yeah. the other day. So after that, I was really like, what the fuck am I going to like? I don't have the spoons to start something that requires like to start something that requires um like me to pay attention right i just kind of want something in the background that i can like follow and and that is like reality i actually almost texted you because i was like what is reality trash on netflix that i can start and i started the, the second <laughs> i did i started the second season of yes. the mole <laughs> barb and i binged that show so hard i think i was very invested and barb was just invested in how invested i had become in the oh mole my god but uh, this season's so much better than the first season of the mole okay Such good because i did season. not watch the first season i'm not i was like you know what i'm just gonna watch the current season yeah. and i kind of think i'm spoiled for who the mole is on the first season so i wasn't gonna go through it i, I also like I'm so happy. Like when they when the first season of this version of the mole came out, I was like, oh, my God, that totally makes sense for Netflix to do something stupid like this, because yeah. it it is oh, it is it was one of my favorite ABC shows. Like, mm-hmm. And I've never watched the original series. Oh I've only gosh. watched the Netflix version of the series. And I think the mole I think the. I think the host of the mole was like Anderson Cooper for a minute. <laughs> like it was at, the, the, at least the season that I remembered the most. It was like they were in Europe and it was like Anderson Cooper was the host of the mole. So it entirely makes sense to me that they got Ari Shapiro to be the host of the mole <laughs> because you kind of need like a semi like respectable like oh my god you i'm gonna say this word you can bleep it out but like you need a semi-respectable faggot to be the one that's the host of the, to be the one that's the host of the show i just checked yes anderson cooper did in fact host a season of the mole that's why like when he was starting to do things on cnn i was like the guy who hosted the mole <laughs> yeah he did the first two seasons of the mole Great. So then I watch, I definitely watched the first or second season. And like one of the things that they did in the, in that season that I watched was that they gave everybody journals that they required them to like keep track of their notes. And it was like an official, their official show diary as one of the, like, you can like one of the, one of the, the, the little traps, the little mission traps was that like, you could read anybody's journal that you wanted, um, but you had to like put money in the pot like situation. And I got to say though, like if I was the mole and here's the thing, I, I know you've probably talked, thought about it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if Barb has thought about it, but if I was the mole, I would play, I would do nothing different. I would just let everybody, I would let everybody self-destruct. My strategy yeah. would be to actually try to be a competitive player and may, and let everybody self-destruct. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the way to do it. There there was one person this season, and I won't say any names, but I think you'll know who I'm talking about, who was so impressively bad at the game that I was convinced they were the mole until, mm-hmm. like, the last two episodes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. That Because, F-slur. like, they're... <laughs> no, 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 not him. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh, no um... he's the one. I was like, oh, you... No, I, I think that he... So I never suspected him... Because he was so open in his talking heads about like, I'm doing this so people think I'm the mole. Like he had just said that too many times for me to think that that was like a weird red herring to the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I I was guessing constantly. I think Barb got sick of me being like, all right, so my top three suspects now because people kept getting voted off who were on my my suspects list. (laughs) But uh Yeah, it was a great season. I can't wait for the next one. I think Netflix is doing a great job having the mole as part of their repertoire. Okay, so Uh, I like I like I like shows like that. So what shows like that do you recommend for me? Because I'm trying not to I'm getting ready and I'm like edging myself slowly to like embrace to do spooky season. And I really want to like start a rewatch and then also the second season of Interview with a Vampire. But I also want to wait till after Labor Day because I just need to like I need to edge a little bit longer. Listen. I know that I'm I know that I say this all the time because I'm friends with someone and produce a podcast for someone. But like if you haven't watched at least seasons one and four of The Circle, 
It is the okay. best competitive reality game show that Netflix has ever produced are those two seasons. Well, I do love Michelle um, Buteau, so maybe I will do it. Yeah, you said it's, you there's should... four seasons right now? No, there's six seasons, but I'm saying watch Shit. seasons one and four specifically. Okay. Um, those are the two seasons that I think like they knocked them out of the park with like what you're looking for. Um, and like the other seasons are good. Season six was really uh, there are people who love season six. I was not a fan. Um, but a lot of other people think it's like right up there with seasons one and four is one of the best. But mm -hmm. it, it's it's similar to imagine the mole. But like if you never got to see any of your teammates face to face. Yeah, because it's all like they're there either playing at themselves or impersonating and catfishing people. And they have to figure out who those people are. But the different it's they a it's a really interesting social game. It's a social game, and it also walks that line of, like, there are characters, and I won't say too much, but there are characters who are catfish that, like, from the interviews, you can kind of tell that everyone knows that it's a catfish account, but they have alliances with that person, or mm -hmm. they just like the vibes that that person brings to the overall day-to-day -day social life of being trapped in this apartment complex. Sure. Whereas someone, they might think, like, oh, that's genuinely that person, but they're just, like negative and frustrating and causing drama so they'll keep the catfish and vote out someone who's very clearly authentic because they want to keep a positive vibe. like it's sure it's like the different layers of like when does the game when the game is 24 straight hours and the only social life that you have is that how much does the game become important to you yeah it's like kind of the question that it starts to ask so like i love that because you do have those players that like they're like, I don't give a shit about any of these people. I'm here to win the money. Yeah. And then there's like the other people who are just like, I don't know. I really like so and so. I don't want to see them go. Like, <laughs> so like, it it's Which that interesting blows balance because it's like, a moon. Like, it's what Muna said in the mole, right? It's like eventually mm -hmm. we need to start. Like, eventually we need to be here to get money. To get money. Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, we'll be back next week officially at the halfway point of the final season of the OC next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Listening to the Geekscape Network.